very exciting session indeed. I have been really looking forward to this one and I hope you all are going to enjoy it as much as I have been looking forward to this. And uh, today's session is going to be all about anti-aging skincare secrets with none other than one of India's and of course Delhi's top dermatologist, Dr. Pankaj Chaturvedi. But before I introduce him any further, let me say a few words about Sipping Thoughts. Sipping Thoughts is a multi-platform and a multimedia company co-founded by my good friends Sukirti Gupta and Neeta Gutgutia. We were set up keeping in mind the tagline, Real Women, Real Thoughts. It's a no judgment platform where we want to create a network of women for women and of course have some men who support women like Dr. Pankaj Chaturvedi himself. Sipping Thoughts is available on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and of course on our website by the same name. About our expert today of the evening, Dr. Pankaj Chaturvedi completed his specialist training, MD Dermatology, from the most premier medical institute of the country, Ames, New Delhi. Dr. Chaturvedi specializes in various clinical skin conditions and anti-aging procedures and is also one of the international trainers for Botox and advanced fillers. He also specializes in various hair and scalp disorders and has vast experience of treating them medically as well as surgically. When it comes to lasers and anti-aging procedures, he's one of the most sought after dermatologists in the country and his clientele include public figures, various film stars and who's who of the country. He is currently doing research on the use of stem cells and growth factors in reversing the facial aging process. Very exciting indeed for somebody who's um, aging like me and uh, not liking the fact. So some do's and don'ts before we begin. You're all on mute, but we would like the session to be as interactive as possible. So please keep chatting with us and sending us your questions and thoughts in the chat box and through the raise the hand feature, we will unmute you as and when possible to, to be able to ask your own questions. Please do keep your questions as relevant and as short as possible. Forgive us for any technical glitches because as you well know, those are beyond our control at times. And without further ado, let's begin with this very exciting and interesting session. Dr. Chaturvedi, can we spotlight him, please? Thank you, Tina, for such a nice introduction. Hello, everyone. Warm welcome to you. Sure. That's a very interesting topic. So first thing is, uh, um, why anti-aging skin care is important? What's the need? Since the time of evolution, the quest, the desire to look good it has increased, right? So ancient man, if you see the scriptures, our history, people have done uh, uh, a lot of things to look good. Uh, Cleopatra, she used to take bath and sour curd to look pretty. In the, uh, our old mythology, you'll find a lot of rishis, they used to make certain lapes in Ayurveda and they used to apply in the body to give it glow like gold. Uh, in the modern days, science has given us an opportunity to address this concern of aging in a more elaborate way. So now we have many tools and uh, more uh, scientific data to tackle the aging process. Right? So I'll begin my presentation with, uh, first of all, I'll be showing you a couple of slides so that you understand what exactly the aging process is. Then I'll be sharing what are do's and don'ts, what you can do uh, to prevent these signs of aging. And then I'll be focusing on the concern-based approaches because aging is not a simple thing. There are various signs and various symptoms of aging. And uh, turn by turn, like symptom-based uh, approach will be there, concern-based approach will be there so that you understand what these treatments can do, what exactly 
uh, your skin routine should be and few DIYs. So I'll be just sharing a few of the slides. So first we should understand what is aging. Aging begins the day we are born and uh, it's highly individualized. So in our day-to-day uh, -day life, we see a lot of people who look very young, beautiful, even uh, in their 50s and 40s. And there are people who look quite aged, even in their late 30s. So uh, genetic influences are there and everybody has an individualized aging process. There's no measurement. You can't actually judge that how old a person is. And uh, there are different rates of aging process in different people and different races. And aging is not limited to the face. Aging is cellular. So entire body ages, your metabolism ages, your metabolism becomes slowed up, uh, uh, it slows down. And there are changes right from the skin to the tissues, to the muscles and to the bones. When we talk about facial aging process, it begins with the surface and uh, below the surface. And there are structural changes in multiple facial tissues, including the skin, fat, muscles, and bone. And uh, facial tissue layers age independently, contributing to overall facial appearance. So basically, it's not, uh, it's not like there is a sequential uh, aging of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. There is a um, there is a simultaneous aging of all the layers. And the aging process is uh, tightly interconnected. So when there are changes in one layer, there are changes in the other layers as well. With, with age, we see a lot of changes in the skin. So when we talk about aging, the first thing is we see the skin because that is visible from outside. And uh, these changes are wrinkling or sagging reduction in collagen, which is evident in the form of reduced elasticity. So the skin doesn't recoil back. Then skin becomes thinner. It becomes more dry because the water holding capacity of the skin goes down. So you will see a lot of people who cross the age of 40, 45, they often complain that my skin has become very, very dry. And elasticity also goes down. So we see that um, there are a lot of stretch marks. There are a lot of... Uh, um, wrinkles, there's a lot of fine lines. So that's all because of less elasticity. Now coming to the layer which is beneath the skin, that is fat. Here in this slide, you can see the facial fat compartments at the age of 35, 45, and 55. These uh, yellow tissue, which you can see on the face, is the fat. And you can see that there is gradual thinning of the facial fat compartments uh, after the age of 35. At the age of 45, you can see these fat pads are thinner and smaller. And at the age of 55, you can see they are significantly smaller. And just for your information, these changes also occur because of changes in the bony structure of the face. So you can see there are bony changes are also present in the face. Now, I'll be showing you another, yeah. So in this picture, you can see there are different signs of aging. You can see forehead lines are there. You can see the temples are a little hollow. So in a young person, you'll see the temples are fuller and uh, the lateral side of the eyebrows, they're quite visible. But as we age, because of lot, loss of fat in the temples, there is uh, a peanut head appearance, like the, the head looks like a peanut because there is hollowness in the temples. Then changes in the mid face in the form of hollowness at the under eye area, cheeks become droopy. There are nasal label folds often uh, called as laughing lines. There are marinate lines, which are uh, lines starting from the corner of your lips and going down. So that gives you a droopy smile. And then there are different folds, jowls, and wrinkles. 
Now I'm stopping the sharing of the slides. So these are the different signs of an aging process. Now, first thing is how to take care of your skin. Skin care should start right at the age of 20 years. In fact, um, we should teach our kids how to use sunscreens and how to moisturize the body so that we can prevent the aging process. As I said, the aging begins the day we, we are born. So to the kids, we should tell them to use a good moisturizer all over the body, uh, a good moisturizer for the face, sun protection. A lot of aging is dependent on the UV exposure. So a habit which we inculcate in the kids, uh, it helps them in the long run. So we should teach our kids how to use sun sunscreen and avoid direct sun exposure. So till the age of 20 years, we should rely upon a good diet, sun protection and moisturizers. Also, if there are concerns like acne and uh, acne scars in the kids and teenagers, we should also treat these concerns because these concerns, if they're not taken care of properly in future, they predispose the person uh, with the premature aging process. Now coming to the age of 20 to 30, what should be done? What should be the skincare routine like? So first thing is, be it uh, uh, 20s, 30s, 40s or 50s or uh, uh, even uh, a later age, we should have a good skincare routine. Now, how to identify what should be your skincare routine? Number one, good cleansing. Cleaning the face is very, very important so that you can remove the dead cells, you can uh, remove the excess oil from your pores, right? So that your skin breathes breathe and there is a uh, deposition of toxins, you know, especially somebody who's living in Delhi, there are a lot of uh, smoke particles, pollutants, chemicals, they keep on depositing on the skin. So clean, cleansing is very important. Second is hydration. So moisturizers, serums, creams, these are different ways of hydrating your skin. Third, exfoliation. So skin care regime is prepared as per and, and sun protection. That's the most important thing. So these four things are really important. Now, we know that these four things should be there in our regime. Now, how to choose a product, right? That's very important. So broadly, we can divide the skin type as dry skin, combination skin, and oily skin. A person who has dry skin should focus on products which are non-drying in nature. So rather than going for um, uh, face washes, which are, uh, um, I can say a little harsh on the skin, uh, more focused on uh, removing the oil from the skin, person should go for cleansers, gentle cleansers, creamy cleansers, something is not too foamy. A person with a dry skin. So this is how you can choose a cleanser. Then moisturizer. It should be a cream-based moisturizer. Dry skin requires a creamy moisturizer. Then sunscreen. Again, a sunscreen, different sunscreens are available in the form of uh, lotions, emulsions, so sunscreen should be in the form of a cream. When it comes to exfoliation, the person having a dry skin should not use scrub or too much of, uh, um, I can say, uh, loofah or something which is very harsh in nature. So scrubs and home-based face packs which, can, uh, which contain a uh, uh, lot of uh, scrubbing objects, they, they should not be used on the skin because dry skin already have uh, a defective barrier. The barrier function is not working properly. That's why the skin is dry. Also, they should take supplements which have got omega fatty acids and antioxidants. Coming to the combination skin. A person having combination skin is the most confused person when it comes to choosing a skincare regime because when the person uses a, a cream-based uh, product, uh, there are acne, there are black and white edge, skin feels very greasy or oily. And when person uses very light products, water-based products, the skin becomes too, like uh, there is a lot of dryness. So oily skin um, requires a balance between exfoliation and hydration. So gentle face wash, they're essential. So that's excessive oil can be cleaned from the skin. The moisturizers should be water-based moisturizers or moisturizing lotions. Cream should not be used. 
and then sunscreens which uh, should be light in nature sunscreens which are not too greasy or not too creamy so a lot of uh, sunscreen gels are available a lot of sunscreen emulsions and lotions are available which are suited for uh, people who have combination skin i also recommend twice in a week exfoliation so a uh, person can use alpha hydroxy acids which are freely available eha based uh, face packs and there are mechanical scrubs as well so twice in a week the skin should be scrubbed this is the skin care regime for combination skin then comes oily skin oily skin uh, has one drawback that uh, it is loaded with uh, hyperactive sebaceous glands so a lot of oil keeps on coming in in india we mostly have oily skin and combination skin very few people have dry skin and uh, also this skin is uh, prone for acne so a cleanser should be very efficient so that it can uh, declog your pores it can extract all the oil which has been clogged uh, uh, inside the sebaceous gland activity can be toned down so uh, face wash which is efficient and good uh, removal of oil oil control that sh- that can be used salicylic acid based face wash is there also very efficient and uh, if somebody has got a uh, tendency of acne then benzoyl peroxide based which are over the counter uh, uh, products they can also be used so good face wash after that toners so toners they maintain the ph of the skin also they temporarily make your pores little smaller after that a moisturizer so moisturizer should be a water based moisturizer it should be thin so that it doesn't make your skin greasy oily and it shouldn't clog the pores because if that will happen again the person will break out uh we also prefer to use certain uh, special products for this kind of skin Uh, like retinol retinoic acid and alpha hydroxy acid popularly known as ahas they calm down the glands uh, oil glands so that uh, uh, the tendency of acne can be reduced they also um, uh, cause micro exfoliation of the skin so that whatever blackhead whiteheads comedones are being formed on the skin they can also be reduced and they also have got anti acne properties so this is how we can take care of oily skin i recommend alternate days scrubbing of uh, oily skin scrub should not be too harsh it should be a gentle scrub so that uh, like whenever you're choosing a scrub don't go for a big particle size scrub go for a scrub which is having uh, very fine beads we call it skin polish so those kind of scrubs are quite beneficial other than that after the age of uh, 25 I also recommend certain specialized anti-aging products. So this is the ideal time to introduce certain anti-aging uh, creams in the regime. Again, how to choose an anti-aging uh, cream? So normal regime uh, cleanser, toner, moisturizer, sunscreen. That is common for everybody. But after the age of twenty-five, depending on the skin type, dry skin, combination skin, oily skin, you should also start using something. which slows down the uh, aging process now starting from the dry skin so dry skin requires barrier repair as we know that dry skin has defective barrier function it it doesn't have a uh, good capacity to hold the water so water there is constant loss of water from this kind of skin and that's why it feels dry so what we need we need something which forms a barrier on the skin so that we can reduce the water loss second something which hydrates it so hyaluronic acid based serums they, they are quite quite useful for dry skin hyaluronic acid is a molecule which has a capacity to trap 1000 uh, molecules of water so one molecule of hyaluronic acid can actually hold and retain 1000 molecules of water so hyaluronic acid serums when they are applied on the dry skin these molecules they seep in and whenever a moisturizer is applied they trap the water and they hold it so after the application you'll find the skin is soft supple and the moisture will last for a longer period otherwise dry skin becomes dry very frequently second the creams which have got ceramides 
ceramide is a natural uh, uh, product which is there in our skin so ceramides is is like a, a natural repairing product so when we apply ceramide based moisturizers we repair the skin we uh, replenish the barrier function of the skin so these two things are very very important for uh, people who have got dry skin people who have got dry skin should not use retinol because retinol is known to exfoliate the skin retinol is uh, retinol makes the skin little dry what these days uh, uh, what people do these days they are you know, on the social media they see uh, different different advertisements and they randomly pick okay retinol anti aging serum wow i should buy it and next day onward they start using it and after 3 4 days they come to me with red face and a lot of swelling irritation so this is uh, something which happens when you choose a wrong product so retinol is quite a good molecule but you should know who should use retinol so retinol is not made for everybody same goes to alpha hydroxy acid or ahas so there a lot of uh, aha based serums are available in the market and the same complication same problem occurs when these uh, people who have got dry skin start using ahas so uh, no retinol and no ahas if you have got dry and sensitive skin hyaluronic acid and ceramides are the product of your choice so whenever you are picking up an anti aging cream look for these two products now coming to the combination skin for the combination skin people uh, retinol and ahas are the preferred products because they increase the turnover of the cells so cells they keep on uh, 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 they enhance the cellular renewal so there is constant micro exfoliation of the skin and uh, also they keep uh um, the pores declogged and they tone down the oil producing glands so retinol or alpha hydroxy acid which have like uh, glycolic acid they should be used at bed time by the people who have got combination skin now coming to the people with the oily skin so oily skin people also need these two products as their anti aging uh, agents ahas and retinol but in a higher concentration uh, than people who have got combination skin right so high um, there are a couple of brands like obaji is one of the good brands uh, prescribed solutions is one of the good brands they make a uh, good quality of retinol which is quite potent so oily skin it uh, requires more uh, uh, concentrated products and uh, this is how uh, we can introduce these anti aging products in their regime so hope uh, these things will uh, help you when you are picking anti aging creams or anti aging serums for your regular use now coming to the concern based approach so in my like as i discussed nobody wants to look old and uh, i often ask a question from my patients who visit my clinic right at the age of 60 65 that what do you think like if you um, get some special powers you want to look like this or you want to look younger so of course doctor i want to look younger and i want to do all those things which i used to do in my uh, uh, young age like when i was 20 or 30s so in aging process what happens like uh, deep inside we want to look young but again uh, aging is inevitable it keeps on happening so it's uh, not even uh, not in our control uh, that uh, we can completely change our look and also we want to do same things which we used to do Uh, in our young age but again at the age of 60 70 we have uh, our uh, uh, limitations the body doesn't support so science has given us opportunity that to certain extent we can address these issues keeping the safety and the comfort of the patient in the mind uh, so i'll be talking about the concern based approach like how uh, people come to me with their concerns and how i uh, address these issues and how I get at them so the first thing is uh, the skin sagging so right after the age of 35 uh, thanks to gravity because of constant pull we start uh, seeing certain uh, jowls like uh, skin folds are there then our skin becomes little saggy uh, jaw line doesn't stay that well defined so these changes occur because of uh, reduced collagen in the skin over the period of time and uh, because of uh, reduced thickness of the skin and because of gravity so these changes um, 
are also like so uh, when we talk about the aging process as i said it's not only about the superficial layer of the skin it's about the entire uh, like skin fat muscles and bone so these changes they keep on happening over the period of time so first changes which we see uh, on the face are fine lines wrinkles then we see the sagging folds and uh, after some time we see that there is under eye hollowness the cheeks become hollow cheeks droop down uh, the jaws become very prominent chin becomes short and there are a lot of fine lines and wrinkles and these changes are also seen on the neck and upper chest so now starting with common concern so one is uh, wrinkles so when people come with the concern of wrinkles first thing is to notice whether wrinkles are dynamic or static dynamic means um, wrinkles which appear with the facial expression they are dynamic wrinkles and when expressions are not there the skin seems uh, smooth and uh, uh, perfectly fine dynamic wrinkles are easiest to treat i'll tell you how static lines are next step so when dynamic wrinkles are not treated because of repeated uh, expressions because of uh, frequent uh, expressions and uh, uh, contractions of the muscles we get lines uh, which are static like permanently uh, they they they're present permanently on uh, these areas like forehead around the face around the eyes and around the mouth so these are called as static wrinkles dynamic wrinkles occurs because of uh, muscular activity so when we smile because of contraction of the uh, the muscle here skin also contracts because it's tightly adhered to the muscles and we see these wrinkles so how we approach we uh, there's a very popular treatment you must be uh, must be knowing about it that's called as uh, botox or botulinum toxin so we inject in the hyperactive muscle and because of that we do not see over activity of the muscle and the skin appears to be smooth so dynamic wrinkles are easiest to treat and uh, if we prevent these dynamic wrinkles we can also prevent the permanent wrinkles to certain extent then permanent lines so when we like you must have seen a lot of europeans having uh, lines extending from the eye like corner of the eye is going down a lot of lines in the forehead a lot of lines around the face these are static lines static lines cannot be treated with the botox for the static lines we require treatments which trigger the uh, production of collagen so there are certain lasers like fractional co2 resurfacing micro needling vampire facial so these are the treatment which stimulate your own uh, uh, healing process and because of that your skin makes more and more collagen and slowly you see that your lines and wrinkles are getting better then comes to uh, then comes sagging so wrinkles and fine lines are seen after the age of 30 sometimes we see them as early as uh, uh, like early 20s so we do not consider them as uh, uh, like a lot of people think that these lines and wrinkles should appear after the age of 35 so as i said they they are dependent on the expressions a person who is more expressive will develop lines little early and person who is not uh, using these muscles uh not making faces not uh, smiling much will develop these lines little later so this is not related to the intrinsic aging it's not like somebody who is um developing these lines is too old so that's a misconception in europe uh, even the teenagers they they have these lines sagging uh contrary to the sagging is a sign of aging which actually occurs because of loss of volume and because of reduced elasticity of the tissue so tissue sags down and because of that we uh, see the sagging sagging requires skin tightening procedures you can't uh, correct it with the facial exercise you cannot correct it by the, uh, the the massages or the facials why because sagging occurs due to uh, like it is a full thickness phenomenon it is not uh, something which is there on the surface sagging occurs because of um, reduce collagen in your skin so uh, gravity pulls it down and it comes and second because of loss of volume so when there is no support skin droops down and you see a fold for the sagging we do two things number one 
we do the skin tightening therapies so that we can stimulate the collagen. Uh, popular treatments are uh, RF-based skin tightening. A few examples are there, like uh, Thermage is a treatment, Intragen is a treatment. So these treatments, they again stimulate the production of collagen in your skin. There is production of collagen in the full thickness and slowly you see the skin is, uh, it gets better. So these treatments, they take two to three months of time to show up the results. Uh, these days, we recommend our patients to start these tightening procedures before they see this kind of sagging because um, sagging is best prevented because once there's too much of sagging, we have to uh, give a couple of different, different treatments to address that kind of sagging. When the sagging is severe, when we see that jowls are very prominent, we also uh, consider the fact that there is some amount of laxity in the muscles as well. So when um, we have to target even the deeper layers and the muscles, we also use a treatment called as high energy focus ultrasound or HIFU. A few examples are there like uh, ultracell and ul therapy. So these treatments, they actually target your skin, they target the tissue beneath your skin till the bone so that the sagging can be corrected. Then there are uh, certain aging signs of aging because of loss of volume. So I see a lot of patients in my practice who come with a uh, deflated face. They say, doctor, my, like these days, I do, my face looks very flat. Uh, uh, I have developed puffiness around my eyes or I've developed this uh, groove at my under eye area. I look as if I'm very tired. So all these things are there when there is loss of fat from the face. So aging is also one of the uh, uh, problem where the fat comes in unwanted areas and like double chin, tummy, love handles, and we lose fat from the areas where we actually need the fat. So this uh, problem is corrected by replenishing the lost volume. I always give a simile, it's like a dip, the face becomes like a deflated balloon. If you take a balloon, if you uh, the deflated 50%, you'll see the skin becomes very saggy and wrinkly because there's no support. In my previous slides, uh, I showed you that how the, the fat compartments of the face, they become thinner and thinner and thinner over the period of time as we age, okay? So this is done by uh, doing the fillers or by doing the fat grafting. So when we see the cheeks are deflated, cheeks are droopy, we either take patient's own fat and we process that fat and we inject in this area or we take fillers and we inject in these areas and the under eye area and the areas where, wherever, wherever we feel that the volume loss has made a significant change. Other than that, uh, there are a lot of other advances in uh, non-surgical treatments where we can also use certain threads to lift the face, to uh, correct the nasal label fold, to collect the jowls. And uh, there are also the treatments which use your own growth factors like a vampire facial. You must have heard about it. Kim Kardashian started taking it. So we take your own gro growth factors from your blood. We infuse them in the skin to slow down the aging process. So every year there are new treatments uh, we are getting new insights about the aging and we try to address all these concerns by using something which is effective and uh, safe for my patients. So this is, uh, yeah, so these are the non-surgical treatments and then there are patients who actually uh, start their anti-aging regime quite late and they still want to uh, get rid of certain things. So when there are massive uh, aging changes in the skin like excessive laxity of the skin, too much of, uh, too much of uh, sagging in the skin, then we also do surgical facelift therapies, surgical brow lift, and uh, other procedures where uh, we can actually give a youthful appearance to a patient. So our job is to make a patient happy. If you want to look good, science is there. We are there to help you. Also, uh, these are uh, these treatments are like choice based treatments, so it's not they should not be imposed. Like when somebody comes to me and asks, "Doctor, 
Uh, do you think they're really necessary for me? My, my answer is nothing is necessary. Most necessary thing is that you should be happy and you should be satisfied. And if your looks are bothering you, if you're concerned, if you're not happy about your face, of course, you can make it better. And these things, um, there are different, different steps. So not everybody requires every, everything. It depends. So what you wish can be done. So this is uh, my uh, small uh, information regarding the anti-aging skincare and anti-aging treatments. Now, uh, I would like to know what our audience thinks. And uh, if there are questions, I'll be able to answer. So over to Tina. Hello. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Okay. That was very informative indeed. Thank you, Dr. Pankaj, for that. Um, so having suffered from a lot of skin-related issues myself, I really value the advice that you put out there today. I have had PCOD, and uh, so I've had cystic acne all my life, um, and scarring, of course, and then hirsutism also. So I do value a good dermatologist, really. Um, so we have a lot of questions, Dr. Pankaj, for you today. Um, and a lot of them have to do with uh, taking care of melasma and brown spots, you know, pigmentation. So if you could just um, tell our audience about how to take care of that and if there are any treatments available, be it by medication or laser, whatever you could suggest. Sure. So I'll be starting uh, with the melasma. Now, melasma is considered to be one of the commonest pigmentary condition of the skin. And at the same point of time, we also consider this as one of the most difficult skin condition to treat. I'll tell you why, like what melasma is. Melasma is a brownish pigmentation which we see on the cheeks, especially in females. And uh, roughly 93% patients who have melasma they are females, 7% of them are men. Melasma uh, doesn't have any uh, specific reason. A lot of patients ask the question, doctor, why I am uh, I'm having melasma? So answer is like, nobody knows why melasma is there. There are genetic factors. There are hormonal factors. There are environmental factors like UV exposure, oxidative damage, stress, and there are unknown factors. The first thing with the melasma is to treat the factor which you can identify. So when a patient comes with melasma, the first thing is I check the nutritional status. I see whether anemia is there or not because they are known to trigger the melasma. They are known to accessorate the, the melasma. Second, I also screen the patient for any hormonal disorder. A lot of patients who have PCOS or associated hormonal conditions, they have melasma or, um, and, and, and it is also known that their melasma is quite refractory in nature. It doesn't respond very well to the treatments. Number three, sun protection. Sun protection is the key to the treatment. So we have specialized treatments for the melasma and we have very high success rate as well. But if sun protection is not followed, then even these treatments, they fail. Fourth, do not rely only on the treatments. You also should have a good skincare program, a good home care. So how we treat melasma? Number one, there are skin lightening creams, which actually bleach the extra pigmentation, which is there, they bleach the melanin. Second, there are creams which repair the barrier function. Then there are antioxidant serums, which uh, reduce the oxidative damage. Fourth, there are good moisturizers which increase the level of hydration. Five, there are skin lightening therapies which you can, uh, uh, any good dermatologist can offer you. Uh, these skin lightening therapies, they range from a mild chemical peels to the skin lightening lasers like key switch lasers. And there are patented uh, systems which we offer in India like Derma Milan and a few uh, other skin lightening uh, cocktails, which are developed by a couple of companies. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination approach. Right? 
also the the purpose of melasma treatment is to make it lighter so we are, i always tell my patient that it's my responsibility like what i am trying to do i am trying to make it lighter so that you can conceal the makeup sometimes it goes completely but that is not something which i aim for and that's not something i tell my patients that it is going to go it becomes lighter and then we try to maintain it so if you have melasma you have to be very regular with your skin care regime and do not give up that's a mantra because uh, sometimes uh, it takes time and patients they get frustrated that doctor nothing is working on my skin why should i take the treatment no how regular you are how disciplined you are that makes a difference and i haven't seen any patients of the melasma who hasn't improved that's in my practice so that i uh, always tell my patients that i will make you better for sure but you have to be patient but never ever think that's going to go completely if it goes you're lucky there are patients but never ever think that it has to go no so about the melasma second um, you said acne right um so basically um brown spots and pigmentation would also be covered in melasma would you say yes yes brown spots same approach brown spots basically they are freckles and they are mostly um seen in the people uh, who are very fair and you must be seeing a lot of spots are there in uh, uh, europeans caucasians they have these freckles yes. their instagram filters which give you freckles when you click a picture mm-hmm. selfie right uh freckles again we can't make them uh, go completely because they have a genetic uh, predisposition but if you use a good sunscreen and uh, there are few treatments which completely remove the freckles so we we offer these treatments in our clinic but you have to uh, use sunscreen good skin care regime avoid direct sun protection so that they do not come back that quickly freckles they always come back sometimes melasma sometimes melasma never comes back right there are patients like you patient but freckles they they will come back inevitable because they strongly uh, connected to the genetics thankfully we being indians we don't get too many freckles <laughs> yes okay so now the next question is from nidhi gijre i will pass it on to her Uh, good evening sir good evening sir uh, so uh, you talked about serums uh, sunscreen lotions moisturizer uh, my major thought is uh, if we use so many chemicals on our face on a daily basis in the long run is it safe to use so many chemicals because these days we hear the skin absorbs everything we apply on it and it goes into the blood stream so is it really safe to use all these chemical products and peels and everything very good question nidhi first thing is everything which you see in your life is a chemical even water is a chemical so you can't say that i don't use chemicals we can't survive without chemicals we should differentiate between the the skin friendly chemicals and the harmful chemicals uh, you are right the skin absorbs everything so ahas like alpha hydroxy acids i talked about they they are natural products they are derived from um, raw fruits sugar cane juice hyaluronic acid is a natural molecule now the name is acid right but it is there in our skin is a is a natural sugar which is there in our skin it uh, Uh, traps the water retinol retinol is a derivative of vitamin a so most of most of the modern skin care has been derived from natural sources only now what is the difference uh, a lot of people they do they use diy the doctor i'm applying nebu on my skin uh, so that i can get some vitamin c the difference is that these serums which are uh, prescribed by dermatologists we know that what should be the concentration we know the source we know the level of purity so they're skin friendly they're not harmful and all these uh, prescribed products they have at least 5 to 7 years of research and they they're not launched overnight in the market there's a lot of studies which are done in the patients whether side effects were there or not any kind of 
uh, uh, cancers, uh, side effects, and any kind of harmful things, they're excluded, then only they come in the market. So they're completely safe and uh, there's no harm in using them. What I tell my patients, do not use random products, just like cosmetic things, which are freely sold over the counter where you do not know what is the, what are the ingredients. You know, people go to the parlors, they get their facials done and they say, Dr. Wow, I have very nice glow. 70% of them, they are using bleaches as their ingredients. So you are getting it done. The parlor person is applying and doing the massage. Neither he knows what he's applying, nor the person knows, right? So those things are harmful, but something which has been prescribed by a dermatologist, something which is uh, dermatologically tested is quite safe for the skin. I totally agree with that. I haven't um, had a single facial in my life till I was 42 because I would uh, break out when I would go to these salons for facials. And uh, now I go once a month to all the dermatologists for these Hydra facials and I'm simply enjoying it. My skin has never looked better, doctor. Um, so with that, um, I will pass on the next question being Kavita Arora's. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, Kavita. Uh, I Kavita, you're not audible. Kavita, could you try increasing the volume of your laptop or your mobile? Just a sec. Hello? Yeah, now it's better. Yes, Kavita. I'm, I've been taking uh, collagen boosting supplements because I had a knee ligament tear. So right. does that also help for the anti-aging? Uh, yes, it does. So I want to uh, talk on, uh, on this particular topic. First thing is, uh, it's a good supplement, right? So when we take collagen, it's a, collagen has got high quality of amino acids. And these amino acids are good for our skin, our uh, joints, and our tissues. However, that doesn't mean that if you will drink collagen short, the collagen is going to travel from your gut and coming in your skin and it will take care of your wrinkles and the sagging. No, because when we uh, drink anything or eat anything, it is broken down in the stomach. So collagen doesn't stay as collagen. It is actually broken down and digested in the form of amino acids, which are uh, there in all sort of proteins. So if you take egg white, that has got amino acids. If you eat fish, that has got amino acids. If you take pulses and sprouts, that has got amino acids. So it is not the collagen which is reaching here, it's the amino acids which are reaching here. But of course, as I said, that they have good quality of amino acids. So they actually help in uh, uh, our aging process. And of course, in the bone and ligament injuries. So I, I've been meaning to ask because a lot of the audience wanted to ask, um, are collagen supplements, um, you know, or maybe supplementing anything in our diet in terms of collagen uh, going to help us uh, not use Botox or, you know, have these fillers to avoid anti-aging? So I think you okay. pretty much answered that. But if you could just elaborate that a little bit. Right. So... Uh, yeah. Collagen supplements are overhyped. Overhyped in the sense like Indian uh, population, they have taken it in a completely different manner. The way they are being projected that this is a panacea of the aging process. That is not. It is good because uh, Indian diet is known to be a little deficient in the protein. So in that way, uh, it is providing you essential amino acids and uh, giving you extra dose of uh, proteins. But that doesn't mean that your are uh, uh, wrinkles which are coming here, they will not come because they have a different pathology altogether. Now, uh, if you smile, the muscle around your eyes will contract and you will get crow's feet. Now, these crow's feet cannot be treated by any other thing. You have to get a Botox if you get these wrinkles. So, a um, couple of it's like couple of things are non-negotiable. If you have fat loss in the cheeks, you can't correct it by collagen or taking good diet. Of course, if you'll gain 10, 5 kgs of weight, you'll see some fat as here, but that will give you overall uh, uh, 
like a weight gain. So you, you may not like your face. So specific skin concerns has to be uh, treated by specific approaches. Yes, a healthy lifestyle, uh, a good diet, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, good quality of proteins and amino acids, a stress-free life, uh, they're essential in the skincare, like be it skincare, like an aging process of the skin or be it internal aging process, they are necessary. But that doesn't mean that you can cure everything just by these needs. Okay. All right. I think that answers all our questions. And so now we move on to the next question being by Sneha Agarwal. Hello. Yes, Sneha. Good evening, doctor. Thank you so much for the session. <laughs> uh, my question is related to acne scars. So um, I developed acne uh, late in my uh, 20s and uh, they have uh, given me some scars on my cheeks. So is there any treatment possible to, um, you know, permanently, um, you know, get it healed? Of course, yes. Uh, so these scars are formed because of loss of collagen in the deep layer of the skin. So when there is a pimple because of inflammation, there is irreversible damage in the deep layer of the skin. And when these acne heal, we find that a lot of depression and pits are there. So um, there are collagen stimulation therapies which trigger the healing process of your own skin. And because of that, skin heals uh, it makes more and more collagen and your scars, they start filling up from the base. They become more and more superficial. So after a few treatments, uh, you can notice that scars are better. They're not that visible. And our target is to treat a, a person with acne scars so that these scars are not visible from a social distance. And uh, uh, there are different treatments for available for it. Fractional CO2 laser is one of the treatment. Derma Pen 4 micro needling is one of the treatment. Microneedling RF is one of the, there are various treatment options. And the best part is that the results are permanent. So once we treat acne scarring, whatever results you will achieve, they're going to stay throughout the life. That sounds, various options are yeah. that sounds fantastic. I think I'm going to bring my son to you. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, all right. And the next question is by Shweta P. Shweta, are you there? So, hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hi, so, uh, I have a deep dark circles under my eyes. And uh, so, I have done like a lot of treatments, home remedies, and I've also used a lot of, uh, you know, the products as well. But then still, uh, so I am scared of going for some laser or some, you know, fillers and all. So, what remedy would you suggest for these dark circles so i tend to spend my lot of time in front of screen being into corporate so that's one of the reason why i have uh, this and also lack of uh, like you know, i used i i had a habit of studying late night as well so yeah so staying up late was one of the reason but then what treatment would you suggest okay sure. so there are different types of dark circles there are dark circles because of uh, uh, stress there are dark circles because of uh, uh, allergies. A lot of people who have got uh, uh, sneezing issues, dust allergies, and they also got a lot of dark circles because of frequent rubbing. Mm -hmm. Then there are dark circles because of uh, broken capillaries here. So there's a lot of uh, bluish discoloration of the dark circles in the under eye area. Mm -hmm. Then there are dark circles because of shadow. So there is lots of fat from under eye area and because of the shadow also the area looks dark. Yeah. So, <clears throat> treatment depends on the type of dark circles and the actual cause. So, you should see a good dermatologist nearby. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there are a few uh, anti-dark circle creams which you can begin with. If your okay. skin is not too dry, then you can start retinol-based under eye creams. Um, a couple of them, like there is one cream called as Ugard under eye cream, you can start at night. There is one called as Depi White under eye cream, you can start at night. So these are the basic things which you can start uh, using at night. Okay. But the actual treatment depends on 
even the choice of creams that will depend on the type of dark circles you have so we need to see what kind of dark circles you have okay right okay. so yeah. um, a few things you can do one uh, check your hemoglobin level because anemia also makes a person look um, uh, like the person is having dark circles that's number mm -hmm. one and number two uh, take at least seven to eight hours of sleep yeah yeah right okay Okay, Dr. Pankaj, so yeah. a lot of people are uh, hoping to find out from you today, um, what are the things that they can do on a daily basis, um, you know, themselves, maybe at home, uh, where they don't have to indulge in taking these expensive treatments and still right. avoid, you know, aging, which is of sure. course a natural process, but uh, still look their best. Right. So I have prepared a few uh, slides so that uh, if somebody wants to note them down, they can also note them. So I'll be just sharing my screen for a while. Yes. So the first thing is you should have a skincare routine. That's the most important thing. Not so it's not very important, it's not necessary for everybody to come and see a dermatologist on a regular basis that you uh, I like you have to take some expensive treatment, invasive treatment. They are uh, that depends on the concerns which you have. The most important thing is uh, having a good skincare routine so that you have a good moisturizer, good face wash, sunscreen, and uh, a good, you should also have a good healthy diet so that you can prevent the intrinsic, uh, intrinsic uh, aging process. And uh, then uh, there are a few things which you can do on your own. So I don't believe much in DIYs because, uh, again, uh, just by applying a lemon doesn't. Uh, give you good kind of uh, uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C is a very complex molecule. So what is the difference between uh, uh, lemon juice and uh, vitamin C serum? That vitamin C uh, is a very complex molecule. It doesn't penetrate in the skin unless uh, it is uh, formulated in a special uh, viscosity and a special molecular size and is also a highly unstable molecule. But if somebody does not have an access to a dermatologist, they can use certain uh, things at their home, right? So one, uh, keep your skin clean, right? So it's very important for you to clean your face two times a day. And as I discussed, depending on the type of your skin, whether you have a dry skin, com combination skin, oily skin, you, you can pick up good cleanser or a face wash. Use it two times a day, minimum. Also, if you use a makeup, please do not sleep with makeup because that will give you uh, many issues uh, later because of declogging of the pores. Okay. Second, keep your skin well moisturized. Moisturizer also, I've discussed how to pick a moisturizer. If you have dry skin, go for creams. If you have combination skin, go for lotions. And if you have uh, oily skin, go for moisturizing serums or water-based moisturizers. Then you can try these couple of uh, good face packs. So this face, face pack uh, mask, which I'm talking about, is made up of honey and lemon juice. Um, lemon, it has uh, vitamin C. And honey, it has got a lot of uh, uh, biological active substances. Mix uh, equal amount of vitamin C, uh, this lemon juice and honey. Mix it well and apply for 20 minutes on the face and then uh, gradually wipe it off with a wet cloth. So this you can do twice in a week. This will uh, make your skin clearer and uh, it will also hydrate your skin. Then uh, you can also make, make a face pack, which you can use once in a week. Uh, you can take uh, apricots, you can take honey, lime juice and cold milk and after mixing all these ingredients, apply this pack on the areas where you have wrinkles and folds. 
leave it at least for half an hour or uh, you can also keep it for a little longer period if you have your skin is dehydrated and then wash it with lukewarm water so this is a very good remedy for people who have got little aged skin and have wrinkles and uh, sagging then you can also try facial massage you can also try the rollers and uh, people have got extremely dry skin they can use clear oils like uh, almond oil can also use olive oil or coconut oil uh, these oils should not be used by people who have acne prone skin or a combination skin right this is only for people who have got dry skin if you have got uh, <clears throat> combination skin or oily skin you can use water based moisturizers uh, at the place of oils and you can use uh, these rollers to massage your face twice in a week you can also go for a manual face massage if you have somebody who knows how to do a facial massage by using these ingredients and uh, this is what you can do to keep your skin healthy also not uh, like the most important thing regular exercise relaxed mind and a balanced diet are the key to a uh, good and healthy skin treatments and uh, all these things they come at number 2 the most important thing is your lifestyle right that should be good your diet should be good you are what you eat so if your diet is not good you can never ever have healthy skin and hair so that's really important so hope this information was useful absolutely dr pankaj and looking at you one definitely knows you know what you're talking about and you're the expert because you are always the picture of vitality and uh, your skin is always glowing <laughs> so before we wrap up this wonderful session any final tip that you would like to give to our audience sure so first thing is always have a skin care program do do not pick random things and do not make your skin a laboratory because these days everybody is you know um, see watching things on instagram and facebook and different advertisements okay let me try this and let me try that please do not try your skin is not a laboratory okay follow these basic principles which we discussed today and you should have a a fixed skin care plan a regular skin care plan number 1 number 2 do not compromise with your diet a good blend of proteins antioxidants fruits that essential for healthy and glowing skin when well, our skin and nails and hair a lot of people they come to me doctor you know i don't know my skin stays dull and i'm applying blah blah products and i'm using blah blah shampoo see but uh, if i ask okay uh, what's your what kind of diet you take doctor you know i i i hate to take fruits and i'm purely vegan i said fine if you're a vegan or if you're vegetarian there are good sources of protein in your diet but how you take protein from your diet they do not know how what what uh, should be eaten uh, in a vegetarian or vegan diet to take the proteins so no pulses no sprouts so uh, be it, uh, if you are a vegan vegetarian non vegetarian doesn't matter you should know how to uh, take good uh, nutrients good proteins from your diet take fruits take green vegetables take antioxidants from the natural sources fruits you know there are very good sources of antioxidants they berries they pomegranate blueberries cherries they are loaded with antioxidants right so skin good skin care routine second your diet and third de stress yourself right so good sleep is a mantra in fact this is one of the very very important aspects of anti aging people who do not take proper sleep they can never ever have healthy and glowing skin so follow these three mantras and hopefully aging will not show up that quickly thank you so much for being with us today dr pankaj and uh, with that i bid all of you a very warm and good evening and hopefully we'll all meet soon again bye bye for now thank you bye bye